What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fowler, my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through this week's golf slate, the match play. Um, Sheets, real quickly before we get into everything, let's. Uh, why don't you give us a little rundown of how it, of, uh, you know, we talked about this last year. In general, obviously, you want to separate your guys mostly, but sometimes that's what everybody else is doing. You just, just, just sort of give us a little rundown if you could do it. Okay, know. first of all, um, let me share the bracket with you. And, and, and the, 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 what you mentioned, is just not the case. Um, <laughs> the, the idea is that you want to give yourself the opportunity when you're building lineups to go for four for four if possible, or as close to it as possible. And with that, you know, to set up your lineups in a way that you don't have guys running into each other too early. And um, we had this discussion last year and you had, you had two points, one, one which could be valid and one which is just not. Um, the one really valid point that you made was that, listen, don't, don't get too stressed about trying to create a four for four. There's no one's going four for four. And I think, I think we actually made like a dollar bet. And I said, I bet you X, Y, Z, we go four for four. And you would say, there's no way that that many is going to go four for four. Not only would nobody go four, but I don't think anybody went three for four. Like it was, it was, wow. it was like not, I mean, that was like the, the, the easiest dollar like you ever made as far as that goes. But the point of, 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 it, of it being ownership driven, I mean, I, I watched the video, like Rick Rundgren did a video on this, and only 40% of all of the lineups created gave themselves an optimal chance to get to, to, to make it that way. Nobody's doing it. You'd think that people are doing it, but they're just not. Um, so, 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 so as far as the reasons not to do it, um, the ownership is not the thing. The, the thing that, that, that might make sense is that, is that, you know, don't get too cute about it because then you could end up playing, you know, really bad lineups just in the name of trying to be per perfect where you can play a better lineup and then maybe you won't go four for four, but you might be able to go three for four and have a decent chance to do it. And that was probably going to be good enough. Um, mm -hmm. um, but my, my, my thought is that just because it's match play and because it's golf and because because there's so much freaking variance that there's no lineup I can fall in love with anyway. So I'm not really too worried about that. But just to give everybody an idea of what, what, what we're talking about here, uh, what I recommend, and I put this in the Discord, if anybody's watching you, you know, the, the videos and stuff, I do recommend that, that, that there are two rules that you everybody should make when, when you do this, okay? And I'll just go over it here. I, I put it in the Discord, yeah. I'll, I'll throw it here too. So what you want, all right, is you want to do you separate these out into kind of groups of eight. So they're like eight groups of eight making 64 total. So like this, this with this guy, this with this guy, this with this guy, whatever. And if you make a rule that you can only take one out of this group of eight and one out of this group of eight, that means max one out of this group of eight, you obviously can't do one from all because you only have six line spots. One for this group of eight, et cetera. Then that's the first rule I think you should make. And the second one, and you can go go way psycho, but I think the second one that you should make also is to separate the sides properly. Yeah. So make it so that at most you have two, excuse me, at least you have two from each side of the bracket. So you get yeah, it's a little work. I mean, you, you make a list of 30, these 32 players and put, you know, put min two from each side. Okay. This way you have a four, two or three, three at, 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 at worst. If you want to get really, you know, OCD or whatever, you could, you could make it where it's actually exactly three from either side. Okay. Right. Um, you could do that too, but, and there are other ways to do things also, but I, I feel as though that if you did those two rules, you're, you're not going to give up that much as far as, you know, lineups that you would otherwise want. And it does give you a chance of, of you know, again, of, of getting to that, uh, that perfect lineup, you know, and again, it's uh, if you if you aim for the for the middle of the dart, if you're off by a little bit, you can still win. So I'd rather you aim for the middle, um, rather than than then just try to get through, try to get through, and just kind of hope for for you know for two for four. So that that's my overall bracket approach. Um, uh, yep. and what I thought we would do is just kind of just go through. I, let's do it two ways. We'll go group by group, and then we'll give our ideas of it. And then we'll we'll keep salaries, you know off on the side or whatever. Cause I did do projections for this same as anybody else. And I'm going to probably use my projection to kind of give my thoughts on these groups and stuff like that. But um, let's, let's see what we can just come up with, I guess. Do you, do, is there a way to make this, is this a clickable bracket by any chance? No, it's not clickable. Like where you can adjust, where you can pick the bracket. Like no, the, no, 
Okay, oh, yeah, I should have put that one on. No, that would have been kind of fun. I, I might, maybe I'll do that a little later on. And, yeah, uh, I know Kenny put one up on the uh, in the Discord, like his picks and stuff like that. Oh, so, nice. Okay, I'll take yeah, it out. you should do that. Yeah, you fill out a bracket and put it up in the Discord, or maybe yeah. put it on the site on like Bobby's bets or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it. I'll, okay. I'll look at it. Um, all right, so so let's talk about the different, and I think we should leave this as the screen because we can jump to the draft to the draft kings and the projections. The problem is, right, you need the guys to win. So right. yeah. Yep. Um, so of the first group and the top one, obviously Rom stands out as probably the, you know, as big a favorite as anybody else or any group, but, um, where do you stand with this? What do you, what guys? So, so here's how I'm going to try to get different. All right. Again, this is, this is, this is when you, I got, you got to pause this for a sec. Sorry. Yep. Uh, yeah. One second. Hey, I'm recording. What's up? Oh, okay. All right. So, um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, so one thing, I mean, I might be out thinking myself, but. All I've heard in, you know, there's not that much match play content, but there, there's a decent amount. And what I've heard is a couple of things. What I've heard is that the top seeds are just stuff you're supposed to pay. I've even, I've heard people say that, that you should make a rule that you have a max of one top seed because based on this incredible sample size of three tournaments that the top seed doesn't really do that well. So I actually think that it might be contrarian to overload the top seeds, like if you can get them in. Um, if, if that, that's what everybody's just not wanting to do, just because of the last two tournaments or something like that. So I figured I'd just throw that out there. Don't, don't just not play the one seed because it's a one seed, you know, um, you might actually get lower ownership than you think. Um, okay. So in the first bracket, I mean, look, I think what we should do is figure out, is give out who we think is going to win. And then who we think is kind of like a, a good shot. You know what I mean? Like a good value place for, um, so yeah, okay. So so John Rom, I like. Um, I guess. I guess if I had to pick the other guy to to take a shot at, I, I guess it would be Cameron Young, right? I mean, he's 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 been doing better. Um, Patrick Reed, I think people like to play in this type of form. I think he's going to be kind of higher on than he maybe he should be. Um, Munoz was in the news the last couple of weeks as being close. Maybe he gets more ownership than he should. I don't know. I, I guess Cam Young would be my shot uh, to come out of that if I, if I had to not take Rom. Yeah, if I had to not take Rom, I think I would be looking at uh, at Homa or Gooch, which would be a fun little sheets. Remember what they oh, said? Wait, wait, wait. What are you talking about? He's, he's done in that group. It's Rom, um, Reed. I thought you Young, meant the whole bottom Reed. part. I'm sorry. I, th- I didn't realize we were going by that. I thought you well, were going I want to do literally group by group. Okay, that's fair enough for me. I like Rom and Cam Young to come out of that. That's probably okay. what I'm going to do. Um, okay. And I don't mind Munoz, but I, I, Young and Munoz is not a is not a, a crazy one to, to, to take a different angle. I'm not going to play Patrick Reed. I understand the thinking, but even if I even if I liked Reed to potentially upset Rom, I don't think I necessarily want to have Reed for this whole tournament. But I, but again, it's it's a little bit of a that is a pretty tough first match considering you're the number one player in the world. I know yeah. it's how they do their seedings and stuff, but I, I really like those two the best, uh, Rom and Young. And and if you're gonna if I'm gonna make some upset project projections, maybe having Young you know, in one of my lineups, because I could actually, uh, if he does somehow get past Rom, I wouldn't, pl- obviously you don't want to play Young and Rom in the same lineup, right? No, definitely not. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. But I just want to say that if that you could go that route of playing the Cam Young, gets it to the Sweet 16 or the Final Eight or whatever. <laughs> I'm so used to just looking at NCAA brackets. Um, go UCLA for the win, by the way. I've got a nice little bracket going. Oh, um, nice. I played one bracket cheat today because the DraftKings sent me a thing like literally like midnight the night before. and it was like I had St. Peter's. I, had, I didn't have them winning the second round, but I had them beating Kentucky. It's like I was just messing around. Dude, I got I I am I'm in, I'm in a survivor pool, and it's such a freaking mind scramble because you have to actually get like have like live games left based on and it's an incredible puzzle. I actually did like an hour video, which I just decided not to put on through DFS about 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 how to analyze this thing. Um, I so I just kind of kept it to myself, but it's a. Uh, but but all these bracket things are really really tough. Yeah, that stuff is good content for people who want to learn, and that's what our people. Are. Okay, I'll I'll put it. Up. I hope you do. Um, all right, but next next tier. Uh, next tier, I think I can do something. Um, okay. Because I always I, I never take Brooks anyway, and and so you know he's obviously the most well known here. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make it between the two dogs. I'm gonna make it between Varner and Ben Roy in here, um, and I will go back to the guy that's responsible for making me some dough recently, and I I am gonna go with. Uh, with Varner as my pick out of this group. Oh, you think Varner is the, the sleeper? I was going to say, I think, I actually think that I'm surprised. It's weird when you look at the numbers, because I actually think EVR, I tend to think of him as a, 
better golfer or, or similar. I don't know. He doesn't play as much of the American st stuff so, so as Varner does, but sort of surprised to see the gap in, in where they are ranked here. Um, I, I like EVR and Lowry. Um, I, I, I like Lowry a lot, actually. So uh, that, that's where I would be looking to Dude, go. And both those guys, by the way, you mentioned uh, that go back to salary for the Varner and Van Roy in our 6,500. Um, yeah. So so those are going to be good guys. Well, one of them are going to, yeah, one of them are going to win the match anyway. <laughs> um, so you're already going to get some points from one of those 6,500 guys. <laughs> no, you, you, no, that's not true. I mean, you know, you know, this works, right? No, no, yeah. But on the, uh, what's it called on the, on the DraftKings one, doesn't it, you, you still get points for the second round and stuff. Right. But I mean, but you know, but you have to, you have to advance. Okay. Yeah. So this is, this is what happens. So you have a group of four and they play around Robin. Everybody plays everybody. Right, right. Whoever has the best results after playing everybody yeah. advances, and that's it. Everybody plays the same amount of matches in the first round, and then only one guy advances from the group of four. Right, right, right. I got mixed up there for a second. You're, you're, uh, I totally got you 100% here, but uh, yes, you're right. You don't need to get points, I guess. But you get points, though, still for winning a match. Yeah, but that doesn't that doesn't really add up. No, you don't want too many guys like that, but if you have your, your sixth guy wins you know, a match and then the whole and then and loses. the other one. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, you get, you get, I'm just saying it just throw it out that one of those guys definitely makes some sense. So you're saying you, you like potentially Varner to come out, Varner and EVR to come out of the bracket. Yeah, I mean, out like, of that group of four and, and to, you know, screw, screw, screw capital backers. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay, well, that makes sense to me. Uh, okay, so now we got this Shambo, Gooch, Westwood, and Bland. Okay, that's uh, so here, here's here's what I think is going to happen. The Kenny special, the old Kenny special. That is the Kenny special, right? Yeah. So, so, so this is this is one of those things, right? You have the Shambo is going to be everybody's like, okay, the best golfer pick. I know that Gooch has just got to be the sharp play that that everybody's going to be playing, right? Because he's been playing really well. He's the everybody's model darling anyway. The Shambo we haven't seen in a while. I think that Gooch is probably going to. I'm, I'm going to look at my projections now, and of course. Gooch is my projections. He's like the fourth rated guy on the whole board out of 64. Yep. So maybe, just maybe, we go for one of the uh for one of the uh the Kenny specials, man. They you know, are either these 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 turkeys good enough, like Westwood or Bland. Remember, they gotta be they gotta outscore both DeShambo and Gooch, which is really, really tough, right? Um, but I don't know. I mean, these guys are probably more interested in with you know, interested in this than maybe the Shambo or Gooch. I don't know. So uh, I don't know. What, what do you think? You think you can get to Westwood and Bland, or that's reaching too much? I don't want to play Bryce, but I'm going to make a case for it. Like, okay. first of all, he's been out. He's been injured and obviously missed some huge tournaments. So you can't trust his, his state right now. I mean, he's not going to miss the, the, those other tournaments very often. So, uh, but here's the thing. His style of play, the problem with it in regular golf is when yep. he goes and he makes a 10 on a par five, which he does. Yep. And you're, you're only losing one hole here. Yep. Um, and he's going to put himself closer to the hole every single time. So his style of play actually does stand out as being like probably better than most of these guys because of that just insane aggressive nature. And you're not really losing much. You're losing a hole if you're wrong. Yep. You know what I mean? And then by yep. the way, even if you hit it a million miles left, you still hit it. If you're hitting it 375 yards, it doesn't matter. You're still closer, as closer to the, as close to the hole as the guy, the guy who's on the fairway. Yep. Um, or closer to the hole. Sorry. Um, anyway, but I, I, so with that said, I actually think that uh, Gooch and Westwood would be the guys who I might lean towards you. Cause I don't want to spend up for Bryce uh, because of the, because of the situation, but normally I would be saying, Hey, let's gamble on Bryce. And if he ends up low enough owned, maybe I'll take that gamble, but I, I'm leaning Westwood Gooch. Um, that's, that's it. I don't have like a, a huge, a huge strong take on, on, I, it's hard for me to play bland and, and assume he's going to win, but I don't think anybody else is playing him either. So I like Westwood and Gooch, I guess, to come out of this bracket, but Gooch would be my favorite. Uh, I think I think we're gonna I think we might battle in this one. This is this is like these are like these are like Bobby plays. Like you know, like three three of the four of this group are like Bobby plays. But this is uh this is a this is a good this is a, this is a tough group. So I'm gonna just take uh I'll go. I don't even want to say chalk because I think that I'm looking at home is gonna probably project pretty well, but um I'll, I'll I'll go with 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 uh, with sneaky hot golfer. I'll, I'll I'll go with Dustin Johnson. Um, I like I I like that. I mean, I think he's gonna. I think he's a great play. Um, I don't like this draw, like for him. Nope. Uh, I think that he's obviously Dustin Johnson is a better golfer than Max Homa right now. 
I don't think it's by that much. Like, I don't think it's by an astronomical amount or anything that most people, if you had to pick one of those guys that would, anyway, I, I, I think Wolf is, you know, he started to play a little better the last couple of rounds, but it feels very wrong to go with him. So I actually think that, uh, that, that Homa, the problem is I, th I think whoever wins the Homa DJ, the, the, between Homa and DJ, they, they win this most of the time. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna make the argument for Wolf in this type of format. I would probably go more Hughes than I would Wolf, but uh, it's gonna be Homa or DJ for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I, I think I probably will end up with Homa more than, when, than DJ. Who do you like in the uh, next round? Uh, the, the next, uh, the next uh, group: Scheffler, Fitzpatrick, Fleetwood, or Pulpin. You know who I like in this next round. Come on. Do we even have to question who I'm going to pick on these? Uh, this every time. I'm going to play Fleetwood every time he's on everything. And by the way, you know we keep saying he didn't look at what he's done the last couple of weeks. Sheets yeah. right there at the top, right there in those in those lineups that nearly won nearly won all the money. Um, I, I, I look, I love Scotty Scheffler. Uh, it's very hard for me to, to not want to take Scotty Scheffler here. I think Fitzpatrick's style, just making enough pars sometimes can be enough. So, and Poulter is sort of a, Poulter's good at this stuff. Like this is a tough one, man. This is one of the rare, one of the only fours that I have like genuine interest in all four guys. So I, I, I have a take here. So I'm uh, you know, again, only one sample size, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to learn my, I'm going to learn my lesson. So I had a couple of, of, of substantive takes last year in, in the match play thing. And the first thing that I said was, I forget whether it was Poulter or Justin Rose. They don't seem like the same guy to me. Okay, but I think it was Poulter. Poulter was, is in some bracket. And I said, listen, I hear all this stuff about how Poulter's particularly good in these things. I don't want to hear it, all right? I'm fading Poulter. I'm fading all these British guys that look forward to this stuff. I don't want to hear it. And they all won. Every <laughs> single one of them. Okay, so I'm not fading this again. I'm going to play a shitload of Bolter. I don't care if he's against freaking Tiger from 2000. In this type of thing, I, I'm, I'm just not going to get beat by it again. So, so I am going to be playing some Bolter. He's clearly the fourth best golfer in the group, right, by any metric, and he has no business winning the group. But I'm going to I'm going to have some sprinkles of that. I'm not full fading that ever again. So I'm going to have that, and I'll probably. Um, I don't like the Fitzpatrick, uh, whatchamacallit, um, uh, game for this. Like you said, I want guys who are going to be hit, you know, be hitting it all over the place and not worrying about getting bogeys and things like that. So I, I like, I like, and, and Fleetwood just been been hot. So I, I like Fleetwood and Sheffield. I, I don't like Fitzpatrick. So I'd probably fade him. I'd play any of the other three first. Yeah, I, I got you. Um, I definitely, this it's a weird group for me. I, I definitely prefer Fleetwood and, and uh, Poulter in that group. So at least that's, that's something. I mean, but, I, but, I, but Fleetwood is going to be my main guy, but I, 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 I think there's, de there's real merit to any of these guys, those guys, whereas this next group, I don't see as, as viable um, to play everybody. I think this is, you play Billy Horschel, who won it last time. He'll be pretty popular. Uh, he's my favorite play in this group. And Tom Hoagie would be the only other guy I'd play in this group. I like Thomas Peters in general. Um, but I think in this type of format, I would rather play Horschel or Hoagie personally. I agree with that completely. Let's go. Let's go on to. I think Horschel just got got ahead. You know, and the funny thing is, you know how they draw for this, so they can put the top seed in in each round, and everything else is random. Um, right. How good is Billy Horschel to come off the win and get this draw? Not that these guys are bad golfers or anything like that, but he certainly could have done worse. You know. Right. 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 Um, okay. So, uh, ooh, Hatton Burger. Uh, in the same in the same lineup, that's in the same uh, draw. That's that's a tough one to get out of. Then you got Siwoo Kim and Bazayden who, ooh. So and this one, you know, this is what people, some people are going to do. They're going to split their exposure like fifty percent hat and fifty percent burger, like for example. Right. Um, but some people are going to play them both, like hoping they get one out or something, one lineup, and that's like really bad. Um, yeah. Um, neither of the nobody really projects all that great, so I'm going to have to just kind of go on on instinct here. And again, if, if ownership is what you do, you probably just fade them both and take your pick from the other two. I didn't play Siwoo Kim, even though, uh, what's his name? Uh, Kenny tried to talk me into it uh, the other week. Yep. Um, but Zayden, who he played, had a pretty good week this past week. So maybe maybe Siwoo Kim can, can upset. For the same reason I don't like Fitzpatrick in this format, I'm not a big burger fan in this, pat, in this format either. You know, like he'll, he'll get his, he'll get it, he'll be, he'll be in the fairway, he'll get his, he'll get on the green or whatever it is. Haddon can make some 50 foot putts though. Uh, he's actually, I, I like that actually. I like the 50 foot putt Haddon guy. So for me, it probably, I'd have picked between Haddon and Kim. How about that? Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, 
I, I Bazayden, who cost me a quarter of a million dollars. So not that he was so terrible, <laughs> but he, he literally to, to, to be the only guy without any sort of a streak or any sort of a bonus or anything. And he ended up two under, but it just was like, I had had win and, and it was very frustrating to, to look back at, but I really like Hatton here. Um, I'm a little, a little higher. I, I don't like that. I like burger a little bit, but he is another one of those guys though, that just plays consistently good rounds. Um, doesn't really have like that, you know, the, the, the four bad holes that are three bad holes in a row just doesn't, doesn't make bogeys. Like it's, right. so it depends on how you want to view that. Like, I mean, is that good or bad? I tend to like what you said, want the guys who go for it, everything and all that. Um, and none of these guys, except for maybe Siwoo could be in that, would be in that category, but I, I have it. I would go at the way it's ranked one, two, three, four, Hatton, Berger, Kim, Bezayden, Newt. I'm not saying that there's no Bezayden, Newt lineups that I'll have, but it's unlikely that I'll get to him. And it's probably not going to get to Kim either. I think Hatton is a really strong option. So, cause I, I think Hatton is the kind of guy who could win the tournament too. So it's another thing we should think about, not just about this round. Yep. Um, can't lay him. Seamus Power and Keith Mitchell. What do you think? <sighs> I think I'm gonna get. Uh, I think I'm gonna continue to be thematic here and, and, and not play the, uh, the steady guys. So maybe I'll fade Cantley. Definitely have to fade him, and I'll pick from one of these other two. Um, I'll, I'll I'll take a shot on Power to emerge from this uh, uh, at, for the win. Ooh, okay. I'm a little bit more on the inside than maybe you are but I, I i actually do like can't lay um but i don't think i'm gonna end up spending up for him so where i don't i think that it probably would be power for me but i don't mind i don't mind him in, in more power but I, I do think can't lay is i think he's also another one who's in these even though he's more conservative i think he's for, he's good in these formats enough um all right so that's where i'm at there so let's just jump over to morikawa kokrak Garcia and Matt. Marikawa basically off two missed cuts. I mean, like he didn't yeah. really miss the cut this past week, yeah. but he just as might just as well might have. It would have been it would have looked better had he missed the cut. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't. Uh, if anything, he's gotta be working on he's just gotta be working on his game to prep for the masters. You know, I I, I can't I can't imagine this is the this is the tournament that he's gonna show up in. Um he's probably gonna be like two percent owned, I guess as a result. Um, it's kind of scary. Um, I think the guy, and again, I hate to be too, too narrative. I think the guy that could get up for this, maybe Sergio, I think Sergio might be able to get into this, uh, McIntyre. That's the, uh, that's one of the, that's one of the, um, the Kenny specials, right? Yes. I think he's the one that did he come out of this last year. That was my, I don't, I don't remember. I can honestly don't remember. I think he did. I think he beat someone like the Shambo. I'm telling you, I think he beat somebody really good last year. So maybe fade him too. So I, I would say Sergio, Sergio would be the like, guy to come out of this. <laughs> yeah, I think that's I actually think that's the chalk take. Like I think that Sergio is going to be one of the the more yeah. popular guys this week. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I do like Morikawa. I don't know how I'm going to get to money wise and how that's going to work, but I, I would say Morikawa and Sergio are my favorites. Always a little bit of interest in Kokrak for me. I like his game a lot, but not really as familiar with him in these formats. And maybe I should do a little more digging on that one, but I, I, I like those two enough to where I don't really want to touch the other ones. I do think Morikawa could easily, like, he's not going to play like this forever. <laughs> like he's too good of a golfer. Right. right. Um, all right. Uh, how, what do you have for the, I think the next two groups are basically the two groups of death here. Um, really tough to, to, to get out of the, either of these next two groups. Um, Answer Webb Harmon Watts. I honestly would probably take the guy who's the cheapest price on, on DraftKings. Um, and I don't even know who it is without looking. Um, Webb 7,400. Uh, I just have to kind of look at it, I guess. But I really think any of those four can win. I think this is, I, I don't think it's really the greatest course for, Watt, for, for Watson. This is kind of a short, like a 7,100 yard course, pretty yeah. short. So I think it's between these other three. Um, and it's a perfect course for Webb, who's been playing better. A good course for Harmon, and and oh man, I, I guess I make it between Webb and Harmon. I'm not. I'll, I'll go with uh, I'll go with Harmon. Yeah, I would I would uh, rank it Webb Harmon answer, um, and I'm gonna have more Webb of, than any of them. So, okay. All right. Um, how about uh, let's see. Uh, here, I guess I'll start on this one. Uh, Oosthuizen. Oh wow, Casey Conn. Yeah, huh? Talk about a group of death, Norin. Ooh, interesting. Um, well, Oosthausen is definitely going to be the chalk here, but and he's one of the chalk plays in the tournament. Um, 
I don't think we need to 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 to, to necessarily. I mean, Paul Casey. I I might lean Casey or Connors here a little bit. Uh, that's that's probably what where I'm going. Sheets, how about you? I'm gonna have some Oosthausen, but I, so I like. I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna share a take that I heard, and I'd love to give credit for it, but I literally forgot what it was. It was a, it was a video on on match play by some British uh, betting guy, whatever it is, because he couldn't find anything. And one of the things that was interesting that they talked about was they ranked uh, golfers on Pete Dye courses. Um, it's a Pete Dye course. Yeah, they seem to correlate pretty well with one another. And of this entire group, the one at, golfer at the very top of the list was Paul Casey. Um, yep. And, you know, he's got two basically, you know, he, he's got he's been playing well. He did well a couple of weeks ago, took a week off. All that's good enough for me. So I'm going to probably take Casey coming out. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I think my favorite as well. Um First time I haven't heard you say Corey Connors in a long time. So yeah, well, he's too steady. Same thing. Not, not that Paul Casey isn't, but I, I, I'm telling you, all those all those different takes. I, I found that guy when I had to suffer. I had to, I had to suffer through the entire British accent to get to the take. So, so <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm going to stick with it. I think I like the British accent. Um, this might be the biggest uh, maybe mismatch of any group. I agree. I the agree. Fina is playing. I don't know how we don't want to. I was going to say I. I you, you don't think that T that T Kamaya is going to like just just roll over the field here? You don't think? Uh... Well, if he did, I'm telling you, you, could, okay. you, know, you got an own guy who who, who yep. you know, there. Uh, same with Lucas Herbert. I, I guess you could make an argument for Herbert. Nah, I was yeah. I, I like I like I like Xander in this one. That's actually one of the top ones for me. So, uh, just to finish off that take, by the way, the other two uh, guys that were top rated guys at the at Pete Dye course, believe it or not, the second was, was was Justin Dustin Johnson. Oh, okay. And the third is actually coming from this this next group that Kevin is Kevin Kistner. So I figured I would throw that out there. Interesting. Um, Justin Thomas, for better or worse, again, this is like probably the this is probably the tournament where projections matter the least. But uh, just to throw it out there, Justin Thomas is my top rated guy overall, and with uh, Xander second. Um, so uh, and they are in you know, different 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 quadrants. They're on the same side of the bracket, or whatever. Uh, Kisner, I think he won it two years ago or three years ago. One of one of the one of those, and he does fit the course pretty well. But uh, I'm I think I'm going to go chalk here, and I think I'm going to take Justin Thomas coming out of here. Uh, yeah, I I like Justin Thomas to come out as well, but I I do want to throw in, and I, and I like Kisner too. Unfortunately, the guy who I think though I might end up just forcing in a little bit is Luke List. Um, he's another one of these guys with extreme upside. And hasn't played these courses as much. Um, but I don't think anyone's playing him. And I just think as a low owned option, I think he's kind of interesting because when he's on, he's, you know, he's really, really good. And it's, I think that he'll, people haven't caught up with that yet. Uh, he hasn't caught up with it either, but he's, he's getting better all the time. But uh, yeah, I think that it's Thomas or Kisner. What do you think of the next group? Um, so I really like Adam Scott. Um, Adam Scott, I know Keegan Bradley is, is actually like, what is his price? Um, I, I think I'm leaning Scott Bradley. Uh, Ian Bradley's only 6,900. Yeah. I, I, it's hard not to have a little bit of interest there for me. Um, I like the Adam Scott and Keegan Bradley for very different reasons. Um, Bradley is upside in, in any time any, against anybody he faces. And I like Adam Scott's. Uh, I just think he's the best golfer in this range at this moment. Um, I know that speed is ranked higher and whatever you could argue that stuff, but I, I think Adam Scott is going to have a big year as we keep saying. So Scott or Bradley for me, but I, I do like, uh, do like Bradley a little, quite a bit here. Yeah. Jordan speed again. I don't, I, I just don't play him. Adam Scott's okay. I'm not, and Keegan Bragg, like you said, he's going to probably get cheap value play, but I, I, as, as staying thematic, I'm not fading these, 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 uh, Justin Rose, Ian Poulter guys, uh, so I'm going to be playing some Justin Rose here, regardless of whether he's the fourth best golfer in the group. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I think he's definitely, I think he's better than Bradley, but yeah, but not, Ooh, not look at this. You get two two like model darlings in this next group. You got oh, Neiman and Henley, and then you get um, Kevin Na, who's freaking fierce competitor, man. And then and it's a short enough course for him. And Maverick Mundial is not bad either. What do you, what do you think of this group? It's going to be all Neiman or Henley for me. I know Henley's going to be the chalk, but I, I really like Neiman. Um, I, I don't mind the idea of Kevin Na, but I, I, the injuries and everything and the way he's played, I, I think I'm just going to stay away from it and probably just play. Dude, this is this is going to be a great matchup. So you got the winner of Neiman Henley just for the hell of it. I'll go. Which one do you want, Neiman or Henley? 
Neiman. I saw the Henley just because I think they're exactly the same. Yeah. Oh, we're setting up for this next round. So, so look at this. Les, Hovland, Zalatoris, Tringali, and, and Straka, man. Well, how did he, how did he, how did he get into this group? Um, so boy, oh boy, Hovland and Zalatoris. That's a, it's a tough one. And then the winner of that, and, or Tringali plays the winner of Neiman and Henley pretty much. That's a great second. We're going to get into the second round in a second. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I guess, uh, I guess I'll pick, uh, I'll pick whoever you don't. I mean, I, I, I guess Zalatoris has got to be cheaper, right? Um, so I guess I would pray, pick, as far as value goes, probably Zalatoris. But either one, Zalatoris or Hovland. Yeah, uh, I like the Zalatoris or Hovland. The sneaky play that it might be worth it is, maybe it's not so sneaky, but I do think Sepp Straka deserves like a sh- – like, he's, he's on a roll, this guy. And, and okay. he's really played himself into being like a much better golfer than anybody thought he was. And, I, I, you know, uh, he's played well on these courses lately. So I'm going to take a little bit of Straka, but it is going to be Hovland or Zalatoris. All right, so let's have fun. Go back to the top left. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, we have probably Rom against either – Van Royen, right? Or Varner? Is that what we, we, we read on over there? I, like- I, I like Lowry, but I Lowry. okay. But, but I don't mind if I don't mind Van Van Royen or, or Varner. Okay. So let's say it's Rom versus any of those guys. You think any would you pick any of those guys to beat Rom in the next round? No. Uh I agree. I'm gonna go Rom to the quarters also. Uh next group, uh, we had the the you were gonna take Bryce and I was gonna go for um No, no, I'm not gonna take Bryce. I just was not going to take Bryce. Yeah, you're yeah. going to take, take one of the one of the Kenny guys. Or you're going to take Gooch. I'm going to take uh, to, to to come out of that part. I'm oh, this is, wait, we got Gooch versus. I have Gooch. Wait, hold on. Who, who you come? Who would you have coming out of that group? You did have Gooch. Gooch. Yeah. Yeah, and I I had I had one of the Kenny guys, but I don't think that one of the Kenny guys is going to beat Gooch. So I have I, I'll I'll take Gooch going in that quarters too. You agree with that Gooch in the yeah. quarters? Um. And, yeah. And then you get um, and then you had uh. Well, what it is, you had Gooch, but you have Gooch. Remember, he's got a beat. You have Gooch going to the quarters over DJ or Homa? I think it's really close between all of them. Um, yeah, I can't do that. I got to go DJ to the quarters. Okay, so uh, I'll get a little nod to Gooch, but I, I, I do I agree with that, but I, I don't know how I'm going to get Rom and all these top guys in. And because I think there's some good golfers down here, I actually okay. – I think I'm going to take a, take a shot on, on Gooch, but I, I, I Gooch Homa and DJ will be the ones I, I take, but most of the Gooch. We both had Billy Ho coming out of that, you know, uh, quadrant six, but quadrant five, we were, we were a little bit, you had Fleetwood, right? So what do you think Fleetwood against Horschel? I think Horschel is the right answer, but I will take a little bit of, of Fleetwood. That's the way I would say it, I guess. Yeah. And I'm going to go right back to, to Poulter again. Go yeah. bang bang, right, right to the right to there. Um, out of that group, you had Hatton, is that right? Yep. Okay, you had Hatton against Cantlay, right? Unfortunately, yes, that's very chalky, but I, I think Siwu would be the other one I would play. So, so in either case, you have Cantley losing the next round, for maybe. Yeah, I guess I have Hatton going past that one. Yep. Okay, and for me, uh, I am going to ride. The Seamus Power Train. One more, one more round oh over God. there. Okay. okay. Now back over up to the top right. So we had, you had. Col- did you pick Colin Morikawa or you had Kokrak? I had Morikawa. I think Morikawa or Gar- Garcia. I like both of them. And there, okay. And there, and there, you had Webb coming out of there. So one of us took Webb, and the other took Harmon, right? Right. Who do you like there? Webb or Harmon versus Colin? You know, versus Kokrak. That group. Kind of like Webb. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go with Webb also. So we're going to go Webb over there. Then did you take Louis? Uh, yeah, I, so I, I like Oosthausen, but I, I – I, no, no, I took Casey. Okay. And so Casey against Xander. You think Casey can beat Xander? Uh, I think it's close, but, yeah, I would take Casey over Xander. Okay. I'm, I'll take Casey also, actually. I'll go with that take from before. Yeah. Uh, the other group, did you, did you go against JT? Um, no, yeah. So I went, I, JT is my favorite, but again, I can't spend up for everybody. So Kisner would be my next guy. So you had Kisner against Adam Scott, right? Yeah. Adam Scott, um, Adam Scott. Yeah. That's still my least, still, still the weirdest one to me, but, uh, yeah, I'd like, I like Adam Scott the best, the best, the best in that one, but I don't mind. I, I like Scott and Kisner. I'll probably have them split up. Well, that's what I'm saying. So who do you like Scott versus Kisner? 
that's what I, I really have them split pretty evenly, but I, I would say that uh, just in the interest of maybe getting a little bit different, I don't know if it's a little different. I, I think it's close. I, I think I would Remember, take- You only have to pick them once. You don't have to pick them again. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. I think I would take, uh, I have them like literally 50-50. So I, I'll, say, I'll say Adam Scott, but it could just as easily be Kisner. And I, and I will go back to back with Justin Rose. Same, same concept. Okay. Now, now you have the Neiman Henley versus the the Hovland Zalatoris. Who, who, who comes out of that? Um, <laughs> uh, boy, I'm gonna. T- <laughs> I guess I'm gonna go uh, the Neiman Henley. So you pick Henley, Neiman and Henley, and then. I would Zalatoris would be next for me, but I, I think I think I think one of Neiman or Henley to, to advance is what well, I. Well, we got pick one. Oh well, Neiman is my Neiman is my guy. All right, I'm gonna pick Raquel also. I'm going with the Neiman also. So, <laughs> so, so, so now we now we're back. So now we have Rom, and I think you had Gooch. So Rom versus Gooch in the quarters. Who's it gonna be? Remember, you you already picked these guys in your lives. Now we're just picking who's gonna win. Right. Rom, Rom and Gooch. Who's gonna win? Uh, Rom for me. Okay, uh, I am going to finally say that uh, that the uh, the um, what you call it, uh, Dustin John. No, I'm going to still go with Dustin Johnson. I'm still going with Dustin Johnson. So I will have Dustin Johnson going to the. So you did not have you have Rom over Gooch, right? So you have Rom in the semis. I have DJ in the semis. Uh, now at the bottom, you you had you had Fleetwood. You you have Fleetwood being horse. I forget what you said. I have uh, I have Fleetwood beating Horschel. Okay, so so you got Fleetwood against. Oh no no, no. I, I, Horschel, I had Horschel beating Fleetwood. I'm sorry. So now you got Horschel versus I guess Hatton. I'm gonna go Hatton on that one. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with you. I'm gonna go Hatton as well. So you're gonna have Hatton in the semis. So you're gonna have, let's let's finish this bracket. So you're gonna have Hatton in the semis against. Uh, you still have Rom, right? So Hatton against Rob in the semis. Who's going in the finals? Wait, did we skip the other one? Oh, you we'll still get like to the other bracket in the second. Okay, yeah. Oh, Rom going to the final. Um, Rom and Hatton, you said is what I got. Yep. Okay, yep. I'll take Rom. So you have Rom in the finals, and I am going to go with Hatton to the finals. Now, on the other group, we were in the quarters. You had, uh, you had Webb and Casey. We both had Webb and Casey. Who wins between Webb and Casey in the quarters? I'll take Casey, but I like both of them a lot. So, yep, I'll, I will ride Casey to the semis. And then um, on the bottom, we had uh, you did that. You have Adam Scott beating Kisner. You did, right? Yeah, but I, yeah, again, it's very close with me for those. Okay. Two. So, well, you will we'll knock him out of here. So, Adam Scott against Neiman. Who's it going to be? Neiman. All right, so you got Neiman in the semis against Casey. Who's it going to be? Casey. So you have Casey in the finals against Hatton, all British final. Who's going to win uh, it? You, you have Hatton. I have got Rom. Oh, uh, right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, um, I'll take Rom, but I would. Uh, but yeah, I, I like I like what we've come up with here, actually. And I'm going to go with Hatton over Casey in the finals. All right, Hatton over Casey, and I've got Rom over Casey. Wow, we both like Casey quite a bit. We better right. play them. <laughs> there you have it. Um, yeah. So, uh, guys, just remember to, everything that she said at the beginning to try to divide your guys up at least reasonably. Um, you don't want five guys from one side of the bracket. <laughs> Dude, um, I will tell. I will tell you guys this. Right, if you don't have at least one lineup with Casey, Hatton, Rom, and who's the fourth guy we had? And Neiman. If you have at least one lineup with those four people in it, you're really doing this, this, this uh, listening to us wrong. Let's put it that way. Hey, we've been hot, man. We've been hot. You gotta have at least one with all four of those, yeah, right? No, we've been red hot. <laughs> because if we if we actually got that right and you don't have it, I don't even want to know from you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so impossible to get it right. <laughs> That's going to be what I start off with. Um, anyway, guys, good luck to everybody. This is going to be a fun week. I actually am more excited about it now than I was before. Yep. Uh, Sheets, any final thoughts? Nah, we're good. All right. Good luck, everybody.